Well, welcome everyone to our uh, official last formal workshop. There will be um, still a few other workshops to come, but they they will just focus on really, um, you know, sharing um, different experiences throughout the semester for TAing um, and more so like a informal chat. Um, so if you haven't already, um, feel free to, uh, you know, um, say hi in the chat. Um, and if you aren't on in the sandbox in Brightspace, we will be using that today. Um, please just send um, Allison uh, a chat, your email in the chat um, so that she can add you. Awesome. Uh, well, and let's get started. So before we get started, um, I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. Awesome. And I'm going to make sure that, oh, perfect. Thanks, Allison. I, I wanted to make sure we were recording. Um, okay, so like um, the other workshops, we're gonna start with a check-in. Um, this check-in will is a bit different than the others. Um, so, but you're gonna start by introducing yourself um, and then, you know, maybe share how things are going so far. Um, we're a few weeks into the semester. Um, I can tell you that I am feeling, uh, you know, a bit stressed out at times. Things are piling up. Um, so, you know, feel free to share whatever you would like um, and know that it's always optional. You can choose to pass. Okay. So um, I'm going to create breakout rooms. Awesome. So you should be getting an invitation to go right now. Awesome. Welcome back, everyone. Hopefully you got to meet um, some new people. Um, maybe you guys, you, you, you may have shared something similar. Um, awesome. So for today's agenda, uh, or today's plan, um, so we started off with our welcome. We're going to focus on um, balancing research teaming and other responsibilities. Um, look into some case studies of marking issues, uh, key marking features in Brightspace um, that you could use to um, assist with your marking, um, and practice giving feedback, um, effective feedback, and proctoring tips if we have some time. It's a pretty busy day ahead of us, or busy workshop ahead of us, but um, awesome. So uh, to get started, um, so being a TA um, or a graduate student means uh, juggling many responsibilities, such as research, um, courses, your TA positions, physical and mental health, your family, friends. You might not be in Ottawa. I'm I'm currently actually not in Ottawa at the time, so um, you know it. You could be in a different environment where there could be more distractions, um, and so it's important to make a plan um, to kind of help you balance um, or juggle all these responsibilities. And so here we have um, a plan for online learning um, and work. Um, and there's eight um, different sections that you can fill out. Um, this is only one version of a plan that you could use. If there's a better plan, if there's if you know of another plan out there, feel free to use that as well. Um, and so um, the first one is, you know, taking care of your physical health, such as taking breaks or going for walks. Um, your the, the mental health aspect is, you know, creating a schedule for or scheduling in self care. Um, the goals could be creating smart goals and smart means um, specific, uh, measurable, accountable, realistic and time defined goals. OK, so you kind of break it down into those those five categories, um, making a schedule. So trying you could try out new time management um, techniques, um, uh, the workspace. So identifying what work environment works for you, um, minimizing distractions and setting boundaries. Um, so identifying those distractions 
and using boundaries to mediate them. Um, you know, finding resources, so indicating who you can go to talk to if you need help, um, and your tasks. This could be for the a spurt specific day or throughout the entire week. So that are the, those are the eight um, key sections that we're going to look at. And so um, you're going to head into a breakout room, uh, the, the one that you were just in, and um, in the Google Doc, um, which will be posted in the chat, if I think it's already there. Awesome. Thanks, Allison. I just did it. Yeah. Wanted you to get through awesome. that first, though. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, so you're going to you're going to go to the Google, Do Google Doc um, and find um, in the index, you're going to find um, the, the plan for online learning and work um, workspace. And you're going to list a few ideas in each section. Um, and as a group, discuss strategies, um, you know, other strategies that could be included in this plan. Um, and this could be also a great time if, if you have a different plan to share it with other group members as well. Um, so are there any questions before we get into this activity? No questions, that's okay. And I just wanna remind um, you all that um, Share as much as you want. Um, some of this could be very personal to you. You don't need to share this with everyone. Um, so as as much or as little as you want, um, and that goes for all um, activities in this workshop, okay? So I will reopen the breakout rooms. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Breakout rooms, open, there we go or maybe sharing a strategy that really works for yourself. Did anybody feel free to um, add in the chat or unmute yourself. I did see, um, under the resources, uh, Forrest. Forrest locks your phone so you can't check social media. That one seemed very interesting. I, I definitely think I could benefit from this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I use that that one, Forrest. And it's, it's a really neat application. Like you can un unlock different trees and things. That's so um, cool. There's actually a similar one for sleep as well. If you're prone to like using your phone until 3 a.m. Where wow. like instead of planting trees, you build houses and like hey. similarly it, it locks your phone. Cool. I love yeah. it. That's so cool. Um what else? I saw I really I found under physical health, make sure to shower regularly. Yes. That, that is definitely important, given the fact that we can just wake up out of bed and just start work right out of bed <laughs> or something, right? So it's good to have that, that separation from work and um, home. <laughs> awesome. Would anybody like to share anything else before we move on? And definitely take some time to go look through the rest of them because there's some really awesome ones out there. And, and don't hesitate to keep adding because the more the better. Awesome. Okay, so uh, now we're gonna get into the marking aspect um, of this workshop. So here are some things um, you, know, you, you could think of doing before, during and after uh, marking. And so, uh, before marking, it's really, you know, the preparatory work of, you know, making sure you have that communication with the professor about what kinds of feedback to give, knowing what to use, if it's a marking scheme or a rubric, that's very key. Um, and, you know, it could be deciding what technology to make and save comments and marks on. And this is particularly important for, um, you know, privacy of student work as well. So making sure that, you know, the data or files are being saved on um, 
on a Canadian server. So through the Google Drive through U Ottawa. Um, and, you know, making sure that student names um, and student numbers are private. Um, you know, it's really important that those don't get exposed to others um, because that's very, uh, it's private information um, and if you are saving files locally making sure that you delete uh, the data or the you know the the reports or whatever uh, once the grades have been submitted um, when you're marking um, we'll definitely talk a lot more about feedback during this workshop uh, but just giving clear fair objective language uh, or using clear fair objective language when we're giving feedback um, and then after um, clarifying any how any student request for regrading or feedback should be handled. Um, and this will come up in looking at case studies are that's another activity that we're going to be looking at today, because it happens students come back and they're like, what the heck, why did I get that mark. Um, and so knowing how to handle that is really important. So what to avoid. Um, on the left hand side, you can see an example of feedback that is quite aggressive, um, you know, scribbled out part of the work, um, lots of big question marks. Um, and so it's important to avoid, you know, capital letters because it seems like you're shouting, sh you would be shouting at that student. Um, explanation, exclamation marks, um, question marks or other marking that could be interpreted as insulting to students. Um, you know, an error is an error, uh, not an opportunity to insult. And, and so this could frustrate the student um, and, you know, it could lead them to, you know, cutting off communication um, with you or other consequences. So on the other hand, you know, uh, uh, Alicia, I'm sorry, can I, could I jump in just for a quick second before you get yeah. to the do's? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this, this is something that actually comes up quite often when I review, because, you know, I, I teach lots of big classes, you know, with hundreds of students, and so this comes up um, pretty often, and, and it especially can come up when you start seeing the same mistake over and over and over again, you're like, ah, oh, somebody did the same thing again, um, and I would just encourage you to keep in mind that this, you know, these students are, are, trying to you know get to the course some are just scraping by and they're like please can i pass this course if i fail it a second time i'm out of my program um, some students are trying to get into their next professional program and so they're you know they're there because they're invested in their education and and even things like you know exclamation marks that can come across to them as, as shouting so i just encourage you to think about really think about that student on the on the receiving end of of that feedback yeah great point allison thank you so on the right hand side, um, you know, instead of, you know, uh, the opposite, maybe highlighting some of the points, the things that are done really well. Um, so, you know, if there's something that you find interesting or like, oh, great point, like allow them to be recognized, like recognize those um, accomplishments. Um, and, you know, another way to provide feedback is, um, you know, coming back with thoughtful questions, allowing them to think a bit deeper um, and identifying kind of um, things that they missed that, um, you know, in a, in a kind way, but so that they can know where marks have been taken off. Awesome. So we're now going to get into um, the case studies um, activity. Uh, you will be assigned to one of the three cases. Um, these cases are just the titles of the cases. The cases are actually in the Google Doc. And um, what we'll be doing is improving the scenarios for these different marking situations. So you're going to be placed in your breakout room and you're going to think of strategies um, and ways to, you know, how you might improve these situations and what might you do to approach um, the situations um, by talking together with your group and then adding those comments to the Google Doc. Um, and so uh, once you're in your, um, once you're assigned into your breakout rooms, the case number, um, 
associates with the following groups right here in this box here. Okay. Um, and one last thing is um, whoever has the earliest first name in the alphabet, that will be the recorder. So recording ideas, putting things down in the Google Doc. And then um, the last first name in the alphabet will be the facilitator. So encouraging conversation and the discussion. Are there any questions before we we get started? Awesome, thanks, Allison. Those are the instructions, right? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so you'll have about 15 minutes to do so. Um, and I'm going to reopen the breakout rooms. Ready? Hello. Hi. Mm. I have to go open those instructions myself now because I didn't pay attention to which one we were doing. Uh, we're case three, I believe. Oh, thank yeah. you. Okay. And, oh, I don't, I don't... what case three was, though. <laughs> uh, do we have that anywhere? Yeah, I have it. I have it open. Do you want me to just like read oh, it? Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah, please. Um, a student emails you, the TA, regarding their mark on an assignment. They've attached their own marked assignment and the friend's marked assignment, who has a different TA. In the email, they state in their email, my friend got a significantly better mark than me on this assignment. And we practically answered the questions the same. I believe your standards are too high and I would like to be regraded. So what would you do? I have no idea. Nice. <laughs> cool, so it's on the, I, I like hearing that. <laughs> it's good, it's hard enough. Um, so it's on the Google doc on page, top of page 13 there where we can, we can read it too. Um, I mean, my first instinct would be to talk to the professor to see what he thinks is best. Okay. Yeah. But um, if I looked over the copies and um, the okay. answers were... Okay, moving on. So um, I'm just going to briefly touch over this. So in Brightspace, um, you know, because of the pandemic and because everything's happening online, most likely you're going to be grading using Brightspace. And grades and the assignments tabs are the two most common tabs that you'll be um, really working in when marking and providing feedback for student reports, assignments, quizzes, whatever. Um, Allison, do you want to just briefly talk about the the class list option uh yeah for sure uh you mean do you mean downloading and uploading grades yeah 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 for sure okay um so i guess the big thing uh is that if you are going to be downloading working excel spreadsheet and then uploading again is that when you do uh, an export you can export to a csv file comma separated values and there's going to be a whole bunch, you know, the, the column header is going to have, say, test one and then a little code after it. Um, there's going to be very specific symbols used in the, in the different columns. And, and my advice is just to keep those exactly as they are and then enter the marks in the marks spaces and then upload that file exactly as it is. Um, because Brightspace breaks very easily and doesn't understand um, if you do anything even a little bit different. So that's, awesome. that's it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, this is just an example, and you'll be able to see this today once we get practicing um, giving feedback, but um, can you guys see my, my mouse pointing over here? Yeah, so the, this top bar is a, it's an interactive bar, so you can add sheets, check marks, comments, so here's an example of that. Um, but also, if you have a tablet, you can use your stylus and actually write on the Brightspace app when you're marking. Some people don't prefer it as much as, you know, uh, but it is a way. And on the right hand side, um, you know, there's, there can be rubrics that you can automatically um, input and then giving overall feedback is really important. So just, you know, summarizing the main points of uh, the student's work and, um, giving them feedback to, for, to work on for next time. Um, I think I'm gonna, just for time's sake, I'm gonna skip over this slide, um, but it's there um, to go back to. It's just talking about that there's benefits and trade-offs of feedback, um, but generally feedback is very beneficial for students learning um, as 
lots of research has shown this. Okay, this is what I want to get to. So um, for the last about 15, less than 15 minutes, we're going to uh, practice marking and giving feedback. So what I've done is I've created two assignments in the Sandbox Brightspace course, a uh, mock course, and I have gotten um, mock students to create, um, to actually complete these assignments, assignment one and assignment two, and upload them to, to Brightspace. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the assignments tab in Brightspace, and I'll show you this after giving this instructions. You're going to click on the assignment that um, and the student you want to mark. Um, and then you're going to practice giving a mark and feedback for that assignment using the rubric provided in Brightspace. So on that right hand side, uh, no. on this side here, there will be a rubric shown um, and you can fill that out and then put a score as well. OK, so that's what the, your task is. Um, so if you ha aren't in the sandbox yet, um, make sure that you um, if you if you want to participate in this activity, just send myself or Allison your email so we can add you. Um, but uh, I'll give you until the end of the workshop um, and feel free to ask any questions um, along the way. So just to show you, you can if you know what to do, you can get started right away. But um, I will reshare my screen. New share. Um, right. There. So basically, this is the um, sandbox um, for the course, the, the mock course that we have. Um, and where you're going to go here is to the assignments. And you can see there's three submissions for assignment two and one submission for uh, two submissions for assignment one. So if you click on, let's say uh, you want to mark assignment two, then you go to it and you click on, let's say, Miriam's, and you can read the the task, what the, their assignment is, and then pull up their the rubric and mark them accordingly. And you can see that each there's points associated with each one. Okay. Um, so that is what your task is. And feel free to ask any questions along the way once you are um, marking and, and giving feedback. So I'm going to go back to um, my PowerPoint so that I can give you guys the instructions. I purposely made these uh, assignments fairly generic so that we weren't going into too much detail, <laughs> you know, because this workshop is encompassing the entire faculty of science. Um, we all have our expertise in different domains. So I, that's why I chose things that are pretty, um, uh, I don't know. And a big thanks to those who um, were the guinea pigs for completing these assignments so that we had some things to mark. Uh, I have a question, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah. So was, this might be a dumb question, but um, I can't I can't uh, undo with Control Z, and I don't see an eraser tool anywhere. So oh. uh, if I write something, is it? Yeah. So if you go to, um, if I go to my thing, um, there should be an eraser tool. Um, so here, I'm going to reshare my screen. And there's no dumb questions, just saying. Um, can you see my uh, my mouse here? 
Yeah. So if you click on the drawing and then you there, it allows you to have the option as eraser. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I just missed it. Thanks. No worries. Yeah, it's it's hidden, right? So. Another thing is because there are only five assignments out there, um, there will be some overlap with feedback. Um, but feel free to go in and check out, you know, what other another TA has has provided for feedback, and and you know you could provide more comments or um, add on in different ways. Or maybe you realize that oh maybe maybe I would have. Um, given a different mark and, and then you can have a conversation about it in the chat or unmuting your mic. So I guess I'm seeing if you've made a rubric, there's no other way to give a mark except to go through that rubric. Is that right? I think so. Or you can um, overpower it. So like, what that means is you just disregard the rubric um, yeah. and you just put in the mark manually. Got it. I could go into the grade book and do it. Yeah. Oh, I, th I see. So it actually, I think it's because it, there had to be a grade item first. Mm. So as soon as I created a grade item for it, now there's a space Got it. to directly give a score. Mm, okay. Interesting. I did not know this. <laughs> Learning new things every day. Yeah, exactly. Alicia, I have a question about yeah. publishing grades yeah. yeah so i know that um there's an option in Brightspace. i think to you can like save them all as drafts and then publish all the grades all at once are you gonna go yeah. over with that at all instead of like publishing the grades like each time yeah i'm not sure how so, to do that though once you have your grades in um so typically for um like if you had like a group for like uh, you're marking lab reports. Um, you mark all the students that you have, and they all should have the saved grades in there. And so let me share my screen. Um, that's a good question. Thanks for bringing it up. I'm not sure if this will, I don't save. Okay, so usually you have under like class, um, class list and then you would find your um, your group that you would have but in this case there is not or maybe it's groups there you go so in your group then you would go to um, no maybe it's It's a good question. I've done it before. It just, it, I think it's just a little bit trickier with this setup because we don't have a full class. Yeah, no worries. Um, I was um, kind of tuning into one of the webinars uh, from the Learning Center about working on Brightspace and they were saying like, if you save like the Marxist drafts and then you have like all of them saved and then you can just publish all of the students marks all at the same time instead yeah, of like so publishing them like after each one. Yeah, for but sure. I'm, but I forget how to do that. Oh, exactly. there it is. There it is. So oh, okay. you, you click it right there. Um, and But this would be for all of the students. Um, if you had a specific like group of students that you were marking, you would go to groups and then you would have a group that you're like, that would already be created at the beginning. And then you would have all your your students, not everybody from the course, but just your students that would look exactly like this as well. And then you could publish. It would awesome. be the same thing. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, because it could it's it's such a pain and so time consuming. If you go here and then you save as draft, but then you go in 
each one at a time and publish, yeah, it's it saves a lot more time if you can, yeah, publish all feedback at once. And that's usually, you know, the professor of the course gives you the go ahead. Um, you know, typically if you're in, in charge of marking a certain amount of things for, you know, a student's work, um, it's in order for them all to be published at once so that there's no like, oh, I got my assignment, but why did, you know, they got their assignment, but why didn't I get mine, right? That's the whole purpose of the publishing um, feature. The saving feature, so saving it once you marked it and then publishing it once it's, you got the go ahead that they can, yeah. If that makes sense. It does, yes, thanks. Yeah, so I'd also, also say that people have access, you, you, everybody in here has access to this Brightspace sandbox, um, you know, at, at any time. So anytime you have to do something, if you want to go in and practice something, go go right ahead and mm -hmm. create a new assignment and do a submission to it and, you know, pl play away. That's what it's here for. So, yeah. And I do realize it's one o'clock, so I'm just going to wrap up. Um, here's a few proctoring tips that, um, you know, these slides will be available on the palette. So feel free to just read them over. Um, and if you have any questions, um, feel free to contact me or Allison, or Allison and I. <laughs> and so moving forward, if you have any questions or recommendations for other teaching assistants, um, at the bottom of that Google Doc, um, you can you know, put your comments, feedback, questions, uh, recommendations there so that others can, can see that as well um, and you know this will be this is recorded so this the recording will be uploaded and there's a lot of great resources on the palette as re, um, as we've been going through this workshop series so and definitely keep keep that link handy because um, you don't know when you'll you'll need these resources available um, and um, like I said before uh, this is our last formal workshop for the workshops PA workshop series. Uh, thanks everyone for um, coming and participating in, in this workshop today. Um, it's so nice to um, get to know if, uh, more of you. Um, and, you know, uh, this is not the end though. We do have informal um, workshops coming up on these dates where we'll just have um, conversations with each other about issues and strategies that have come up over the course of the semester. Um, yeah, right up until December 3rd. So, um, you know, it, it's, it, it's great hearing about new um, experiences and we can learn from each other. So hope to see you there. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alicia. Great, thanks for coming.